Everybody, welcome to another episode of Junior's World of Soul. I am back with another video, ready to give y'all R&B the right way, the authentic way. Now, as you can see, I came in with Love is a Message from MFSB and the Three Degrees. And that is Love is a Message. I love that song. That song is like a Brooklyn National Anthem, being from Brooklyn. But I came in with that song because I want to continue the celebration of the 50-year anniversary of... Philadelphia International Records, um, but that was created with Gamble and Huff and Tom Bell. Um, they created classic music. We got classic artists, and a lot of people wasn't talking about their uh, 50 years in this game. It's a legendary label, and a lot of people wasn't talking about it. So I wanted to end the you know the last two videos of current R&B bangers this year. I wanted to um, end with them and give our respects to uh, Kenny Gamble and Leon Huff, and everybody that was involved with uh, Philly International Records. We want to thank you for the good music that we got because <laughs> many people use, you know, the samples of these songs and things like that. So definitely you guys had an impact in this music world, and I just want to say congratulations for 50 years. Well, I gave y'all a good intro right there, you know what I'm saying? But y'all know what this is about. This is part two of current R&B bangers, my top 10 R&B um, songs of the year, you know what I'm saying? If you missed the last video, the video is um, it's up. And uh, those were my top, uh, those were the, the first top five songs uh, between 10 and six. And this one right here is all about um, my top five songs of the year. I am so, so excited to talk about this man because these songs is the songs that I have been running like crazy this whole year. You know what I mean? So I've talked enough. I don't want to keep this video for too long. You know, I hope y'all like my little Christmas shirt. You know what I'm saying? A little ugly sweater type of joint. I hope y'all like it. You know what I mean? But um, so we're going to get this started. So let's start this. Starting at number five is coming from Carmen Rogers. Um, she's representing the Foreign Exchange crew, who I have loved her since 2005 when I was introduced to her album Free. Um, her voice to me is like a cool glass of almond milk. And I feel like it's so delicious. It's so smooth. Like, it's just so amazing. I've just been a fan of her. And um, when I saw that she was down with the Foreign Exchange crew back in like 2011, when I found out, I was like, that's even better. You know what I'm saying? Because she's down with people that love music and, and, and are really musicians, musicians, and she fits right in. You know what I'm saying? So I found that was just so, so dope. But um, listen, I want y'all to check out her albums, Free, um, that came out in 2004. I want you guys to check out Bittersweet, that came out in 2010. And I want y'all to check out uh, Stargazer, that came out in 2015. All on streaming platforms, y'all definitely check it out. But this year, Carmen came out with her EP, Hello Human, Volume 1. And um, it is one of my favorite uh, albums of the year. I don't know what people doing called an albums EP. I don't know. But let me tell you something. This EP, I played like crazy. Now, um, I talked about her song last year, uh, Again and Again, that was released in like December of 2020. So it couldn't be on my favorites list, but I darn sure was playing it a lot. You know what I'm saying? I talked about it. And shout out to Carmen for uh, posting it on her Instagram, me trying to hit the note when I know I can't. But, you know, that was so much love from her. You know what I mean? And, um, but again, this year, she came out with the EP, uh, Hello Human. Um, with songs that I play like crazy changes, beauty, uh, you know, uh, no good, uh, again and again. But it was the song that I played like crazy this year, and I could not stop playing. It was the last song on the album. Um, it was entitled Say So, and this song was so relatable. It hits the soul, it hits the heart. Y'all know I'm an emotional listener, so it connected to my emotions, 
everything like that. And um, this song was just so great. And that's why I was in my top five this year. And um, shout out to uh, The Honest Cook, who I talked about here on Current Army Bangers. He produced the record, and he uh, also co-wrote it with uh, Carmen. So this song is Say So, and here is number five on the list. So here we go, y'all. I'm Yes, that's right. I'm, I will be singing with her. Yes, yes, I will. So hope you're prepared. Mm-hmm. So here we go. Like, that's a bridge, y'all. When you feeling it, and that's a bridge. You know what I mean? But this song is powerful. Listen to the lyrics. It's definitely about finding who you are and knowing what you need to do to move on with your life. You know what I'm saying? Because it's you got to worry about you before you start worrying about somebody else. And this song was very powerful. And that's why I played it a lot this year. You know what I mean? Um, listen, uh, Carmen came on um, our uh, radio show that we had, and we interviewed her about... Hello Human, and she talked about it. It was great. I'll put that in the more info box. We interviewed her for uh, Women's International Day, and she was just talking about how this album really, you know, she really had something to say with it. You know what I mean? It was so dope, and I want y'all to check that out. But listen, Say So is an amazing, amazing record, and that's why it's number five on this year's list, and that is Carmen Rogers with If You Want More, You Gotta Say So. Yes. Whew, all righty, keeping this train going, keeping this train going. Number four, number four, I'm talking about my girls, Stacy, Tam, and Casey. I am talking about the beautiful, the wonderful, the Shandellas. Now, y'all know that they were going to be a part of this list, for sure. Because I know, with y'all knowing about current R&B bangers, I have loved these girls since I heard Reconsider back in 2018. And from that moment, I have been talking about them so much on this show. I talked about Reconsider, Ain't That the Truth, Chills, um, Happy to See You, uh, Costume, If It Wasn't Love, um, uh, uh, <laughs> shoot, um, dang, uh, What Christmas Means to Me with them and, um, um, uh, what's his name, um, shoot, Jimmy Allen, like, I love these girls because, again, I feel like they are so needed. And I have to shout out Chuck Harmony and Chloe Kelly for finding these girls and realizing that groups are needed because we need them. And I feel like groups is always the backbone for R&B. And these girls right here are proving it. I'm telling you. Y'all, like, look, I don't like the stand word, but I must say, if I'm going to stand for somebody, I stand for the Sandellas for real. Because I am such a fan because they're so talented. And I want these girls to really, really win. So, with all that being said, he was bringing out singles after singles after singles. And I was talking about them on the show. But, um, you know, it, it got... To the point where I was like, y'all, when this album coming, when this album coming, and I was hitting everybody in the weirdo uh, workshop, because this is the new movement, and I was hitting all of them, and I was like, y'all, when is this album coming? They like, we working on, we working on, we working on it, and finally, September, we got hits that stick like grits, and let me tell you something, this album proves again and again why I love these girls so much, because it is an, a, it's a great, great album you know what i mean and before then because it's two songs on the album that um wait it's like three songs on the album that i talked about here on current i talked about fear uh has no place i talked about uh when you're lonely and i talked about uh money these songs that i talked about on the show before the album came out so once the album came out, I was ready to go into these other songs, and yo, it was so amazing. So, you again, you had money, fear has no place in my heart. Um, win my heart. Let me tell you something. Tam goes 
off them church vocals. Let me tell you something. Whoo! You got lullaby. You have posters. And then you have the interludes that come before those. And these girls are just singing. Like, this for instance. Autumn is already right where it needs to be. And they are singing like, y'all, please, please hit the stick like grits. It deserves to be listened to. Y'all understand we need groups. These girls are singing. But it was one song on this album that I kept playing like crazy over and over and over again. And it was, um, and it was, the song was called Volcano Love. And, <laughs> Let me tell you something. With this song, I have did so many IG stories trying to perform this record because I love it so much. But that's why when I looked at my list of my top 100 songs on my uh, Spotify list, this was on it. Because I think I performed this song so many times this year. And mind you, Volcano Love came out a little before the album came out. So I was already ahead of the game. You know what I mean? So uh, this song coming at number four is Volcano Love. And this is by my girls, The Shan. Dallas, like, ah, here we go. I'm ready to sing along with them. Here we go. See how smooth it is? They sound great. The harmonies with them sound good. It's a little bop. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I can have my red cup in my hand and still kind of groove to it. You know what I'm saying? And what I like about this song, this song is a very, very nasty song, but I love how Chuck and Coy made this record. Like, you know back then when in the 90s we were singing songs that was kind of, when we look now, we'd be like, ooh, we shouldn't have been singing it, but the way they did it was just so dope, you know what I'm saying? And you had to sing along, and this song is one of them. This is this is a bedroom song, but the girls sound so good on it, you know what I mean? And for me, what I really like, because I have a favorite part of this, where I feel like, even though the girls shine all the time, but I feel like they shine on this part, and let me tell you something, this is where I had a lot of my IG posts with talking about Volcano Love, and... Um, here we go. I'm going to get to the part where I can kind of just go off. Here we go. That's my favorite part right there, y'all. Like, you hear them girls, they harmonies and everything. They sound so amazing. You hear Tam coming in with them church vocal runs that she was doing. Just a perfect, perfect song, man. And I just love this record. And that's why it was definitely in my top five songs of this year. You know what I mean? But as y'all can see, my eyes is closed when I'm singing. And I love just talking about these girls that, yo... Y'all see why I love these girls since 2018, and I want these girls to win. If you don't know about the Shandellas yet, please go listen to the album with uh, hits that stick like grit. You will not be disappointed. These girls are needed. Shout outs again to Chuck Harmony and Claude Kelly for finding these girls and being great producers and songwriters and giving these girls great music, and I just want these girls to win. So coming in at number four is Volcano Love by the Shandellas. Hold on, I'm gonna let y'all get this. Like y'all see how the beat change? Amazing song. Number four, Shandellas, Volcano Love. Okay, okay, we are at number three coming from an R&B rep's favorite. 
We are talking about Be My Fiasco. We love her so, so much. She was on an episode of Catch That, and we were talking about her new record and things like that. It was such an amazing interview. I'm going to put it in the more info box. But um, I've been rocking with Be My Fiasco since like 2016 with her song Work On You and her Layers EP. I don't know why I haven't talked about this girl on the show. I still like kick my head. I kind of kick myself in the head like why haven't I talked about this girl? But hey, better late than never. You know what I mean? But um, so in the spring of uh, this year, we did a catch that with Zoe. And uh, he was telling us that he was doing some work with Be My Fiasco. And I was like, oh, worry. And I was like, well, especially after a song that they did that they released in March. <clears throat> and, uh, <laughs> and I loved it so much. So when he was telling us, yeah, we're working on her. and We're working on, you know, some things with her. Of course, he had to be a little careful letting us know about it. But again, he was like, yo, you know, we're working on her. And I was just like, whoa, you know what I'm saying? So he said, you know, something is coming very soon. You know what I mean? And this was in March. So after a while, you know, um, be My Fiasco wasn't really posting and things like that. Now we see why. But uh, <laughs> she wasn't posting like that and all that. And obviously they were working on the album. And then in like July. No, maybe in the beginning of July, she started having these posts. She was posting. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, she's posting. Okay, what's going on? And then she posted the single, Caramel. And I was just like, oh, okay. And this is like July, like the middle of July. So I was just like... Okay, and she released it, and let me tell you something. When I heard it, I said, Zoe, y'all have done it. This is the song of the summer, and I was not lying, y'all. Like, this song is everything. This song is so dope. So that's why I'm coming in at number three. This is Be My Fiasco with Caramel. So y'all can't help but to move with this joint. If y'all ain't moving with this joint, like Elise said, I'm going to fight you in the face. So... Um, here we go. I'm just kidding. No, I'm not. Bring it back, bring it back, just let me ride. I'll be your sweet, sweet caramel. Hey, hey, <laughs> love this joint. Like you, like you want to put on your skates and you want to go outside, like rollerblading and all that joint. You can play this joint while you, like in the skating ring or something. It felt so good. And I kept telling um, Zoe that him, tall black guy, Fonte, and, and, and Be My Fiasco got, to, got together and they created magic with this record. You know what I mean? Like, it's just so dope. And between July and September, if you got in my car, you was gonna listen to this song at least three times. I'm not even lying. Like, I'm not playing. Like, that's how dope this record is. Like, it just makes you wanna move. You can't stay still to it. You know what I'm saying? That's how dope this record is. You know what I mean? But um, she released her album this October. And it's uh, Where I Left You. And that's when we interviewed her on uh, R&B Reps Catch That. And it was dope. And this album was another favorite of mine of the year. Um, songs like Bad Dream, Love Feels, which is a favorite of mine. Anywhere. And if you listen to Anywhere going into Caramel, it's so brilliant. How Fonte and, and Zoe and, and Tall Black Guy did that. Like, that's brilliant the way it, it does that. You know what I mean? Because you didn't know that when you got Caramel as a single, but when you got the album, it goes from anywhere to that. It was, like, brilliant. And I tell them that on the timeline all the time. Um, uh, Two Car Garage, which is a, a crazy interlude. Y'all got to catch how they made the song and all that kind of stuff. They did it on YouTube. I'll put that in the more info box. And um, uh, think about it with, uh, what's his name, with uh, Darian. Uh, they did a duet together, which was dope. But y'all, please, please check out Be My Fiasco. She's so dope. And I'm such a fan of her. And I'm glad everybody is kind of catching on to her right now. Because she's just so, so dope. And for her to be a part of the 
FE family, it makes it even better. You know what I'm saying? So that's why Caramel is at the number three spot of this year's countdown. And listen, again, y'all go listen to where I, uh, where I left you. And let me tell you, you will not be disappointed. All righty. So speaking of so, coming at number two. Wow, y'all. The FE crew is like damn near my top five for real. Like, you had Carmen Rogers. Then you had Be My Fiasco, and now we're talking about Zoe. And, um, look, I've been rocking with Zoe since, like, 2007. Like, I literally have been because um, he, the way his production is, like, and I'm so glad that I got to tell him this on the show, on our first Catch That that we did with him, um, how, you know, I'm, you know, a big fan of Leon Silvers and Kashif. And I feel like he puts that into his production, but he does it his own way. And that's when he caught me. You know what I'm saying? In 2007. And then when he got with the FE crew in 2008 off the Leave It All Behind album, I was like, it's a wrap from there. You know what I mean? And it's so crazy that now I've been a fan of this guy since 2007. And now to actually call him family now. You know what I'm saying? Because Zoe is family. You know what I mean? And I've been to his show. Him and Tall Black Guy's show. And it's just amazing how I can call somebody that I've been a fan of. And now he's family to me. You know what I mean? So that's, that's dope. So shout out to the brother Zoe. But we going to keep talking about him. But um, So again, me and Elise, uh, we interviewed him in February. And um, he was telling us. Yo, we got some things coming, you know what I'm saying? Meet him and tall black guy, they doing some things. Because Zoe is real chill when it's time to talk about music or whatever. He got to be careful, which is understandable. You know what I'm saying? Zoe, we ain't snitching. But, you know, um, he got to be careful about stuff. So, um, then March 5th comes around. And he brings out talking to myself. And all I can remember is I DM Zoe and I said, God damn it, you did it again. You did it again. And then you got Be My Fiasco on the record, which I've been a fan of her since 2016. And, you know, even though he had told us they were kind of doing something, but I'm like, all this? And I freaking lost it. And then you got Fonte on the background vocals. This song I played a lot this whole year and that's why it's number two on the countdown this is talking to myself and this is from zoe and tall black guy featuring be my fiasco with fonte on background so uh here we go oh god i love this song <laughs> Oh, God, I love that song. Like, this song is perfect. It's just like you got Be My Fiasco riding the beat that Zoe and Tall Black Guy produced. And with Fonte on background, you can't help it. And people stop sleeping on Fonte. <laughs> like, this dude is a musician's musician. Like, he is so dope. I told him, like, he gets the, a lot of people try to throw around the genius word. Fonte gets a genius word like for real because y'all need to check out the process that um him and be my fiasco did with her album and then also working with zoe and tall black guy like he's like dope and then down with the uh fe crew like everything <laughs> listen anyway <laughs> but um yo this this song is perfect it's crazy because my spotify said this was the number one song that i played the whole year which i can understand it i can get it you know what I mean? But I know I played a song a little more, a song more than this. You know what I'm saying? Not taking away from this record at all. But, you know, I definitely played something more than this. But, um, listen, this song is on um, Zoe and Tall Black Guys' um, Abstractions, which is my favorite album of 2021. Um, what he did with this album was just, comp him and Tall Black Guy did with this album was just music. It was music, y'all. Like, music. Like, if you listen to this album, it's just 
a great body of work, man. Like, oh, uh, like you got joints like Hold My Hand, he got Darian, he got Messina and Fonte on the record. Then he got um, I Like The Way with Omar. And then he got The Ride with Cy Smith. And then he got um, the, uh, what is it? Uh, Connected and, 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 and Northland and so many, like you learn a lot about him and his Detroit kind of vibes and all this. Like, it's such a great album, y'all. And I'm telling you, you will not be disappointed with this album. I'm telling you, man. I played this album. Like, I played this album literally every day. Every day when I when Zoe came out with this album in April, I played it every day. And I'm still playing it. That's how dope this album is. And that's why this album is number one on my album list of 2021. But number two... Coming from Tall Black Guy, Zoe, Fonte, and Be My Fiasco with Talking To Myself. So please, y'all, go listen to Abstractions. You will not be disappointed. Well, we are at the number one song, my favorite of 2021, and it's coming from Silk Sonic. And uh, y'all know I'm not, I, you know, I represent, you know, kind of like, you know, the under underdogs and you know I try to give them exposure but when it's a good song it's a good song and um Anderson Pack and and Bruno when I heard that they were coming together I said wow this is this is gonna be magical because both of them are real true artists and I was like yo this is gonna be crazy and it's crazy because March 5th Zoe came out with talking to myself and these guys came out with Leave the Door Open. And it was so hard to go back and forth to listen to both of them. So I played them both on repeat. Like, I literally kept going over. Like, like <laughs> you could not help it. Like, both of these songs are great. But it's like, with me, Leave the Door Open, it, it gave you the the music that I was raised up on. And it gave me that feeling. And it gave me that Philly soul. And it gave me that made ingredient it gave me you know that 70s that a uh, era that is my favorite era of music and it gave me that and i love this record and i couldn't stop playing it i played it all the time you hear me and it's just like yo you can't help it like this record was just great and it crossed all barriers everybody loved it it was number one all over the place and it was just amazing you know what i'm saying so the number one record of my 2021 list is Leave the Door Open, and this is by Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack. Like it's such, like come on, yo! Like the song can't be denied. Like it's such, such a great song. You know what I mean? And it was like once they came out with this, I was like, okay, let me take a sip because I'm gonna get in. I said once they came out with this, I said, yo, they album is gonna be dope. So they came out with the evening of Silk Sonic, and like I gave him my review when the album came out. It was like, it's a cool album, but for me, I was expecting something else. You know what I mean? And I was expecting something that was just like, oh my God, like what, leave the door open? It shook me. It shook something in me. So I thought with this album, every song I was going to be shook, and I wasn't. And it was like, these songs are good, but I'm like, I wanted to be wild. It was like, oh, and, and I wasn't. But now that I've lived with the album for a couple of weeks and... You know, I'm, I'm starting to really see where they were going with it, and I'm enjoying it. And like my sis, Elise, said on um, Creatism Podcast, is that I love the fact that, you know, what this album and this record is doing for R&B is getting people to understand that, you know, you don't have to do this trap stuff, and you don't have to do all of this to get noticed, and it's it, it has that soul in it, you know what I mean? And people are going back and being like, well, 
they saying that they got, you know, um, inspiration from Philly Soul. Oh, who's that? And who's this? And it's making people do a little research, and I love it. You know what I'm saying? So what Silk Sonic is doing for the culture and what they're doing for, you know, um, R&B music, I must respect it. You know what I mean? But leave the door open. An amazing song. Amazing song, and it can't, can't be denied. You know what I mean? And that's why it's number one on my list. But y'all know what my favorite part of this song is? When Mr. Bruno Mars goes the hell off. And um, I'm going to sing it. You darn right. Let me get my cup and all that. Let's go. Oh, you're going to give it Yes, I had to get the note right for this. Y'all won't go play me. You know what I'm saying? I won't go do that. You know what I mean? But yes, this song, dope. You know what I mean? It's my favorite song of 2021. You know what I mean? Great, great song. But I still recommend you guys go check out Silk Sonic's um, Evening with them. And let me know what you guys feel in the comment section. You know what I mean? But yo, yo, y'all got my top 10 songs of 2021 i'm gonna break it down i'm gonna let y'all know what it was um number 10 was lucky day we're running blind number nine was india sean with don't play with my heart number eight was kevin ross with looking for love number seven was uh mac airs with you uh where you going tonight her with bloody water uh five was uh carmen rogers with say so Four was the Chandelas with Volcano Love. Three was Be My Fiasco with Caramel. Two was Zoe and Tall Black Guy with Talking to Myself. And number one was Silk Sonic with Leave the Door Open. Listen, 2021 was a great year for R&B. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> like I said in one of my videos, and I think I'm not even going to say it anymore. I'm just tired of people with this narrative that R&B isn't alive and well. And it really is. It ain't going anywhere. It's just mainstream. It's not pushing it. You know what I mean? And that's why I created pla a platform with current R&B bangers. You know what I mean? Because I want people to know, yes, it sucks we're not getting the mainstream attention, but we're out here. You know what I mean? Anthony Hamilton did a great album this year. You had uh, Leela James that did a great album this year. You had, you know, it was so many people that brought out albums. Like, R&B ain't going nowhere. It's, it's here, y'all. No matter what mainstream try to do, it's going to be here, and it ain't going anywhere. You know what I mean? And that's why... I created current R&B bangers, you know what I mean? But uh, speaking of, you know, having a platform and doing things for R&B, I definitely have to shout out my R&B family, for real. My partner in crime, who I love to death, that's uh, co-host with me with uh, R&B representatives. I'm talking about my girl, my, my sister. I'm talking about Elise. You know what I'm saying? We do this because we love it. You know what I'm saying? That we ain't want to... You know, we don't care about the notoriety when it comes to the uh, R&B rest. We want just people to come to us and, and watch what we do and have a good time with it. You laugh, you maybe cry, you do all this, but y'all know that we love R&B music and we stand by it. I got to talk about my brother, Sin, who is my heart. You know what I mean? He helps me find a lot of soft stuff with uh, current R&B bangers, so I definitely have to shout him out. Um, I got to shout out my sister, Chastity. With Midnight R&B Edition. That girl loves R&B and she lives it. She breathes it. And it's so dope. Y'all got to check out her interviews. This girl to interview John B. She done interviewed Shirley Murdoch. She done interviewed producers that's underrated. She done inter uh, interviewed people that is R&B that's out here and, and not getting any notoriety. But she puts them on her platform and she talks to them. Like, she's so amazing. Y'all got to check her out. I'm going to put her in the more info box. Um, shout out to my brother Neltron who supports everything at R&B and, and he loves it and he support everything we do. So shout out to my brother Neltron. Um, shout out to my brother Darius that does uh, Mr. Dress and Rest, that does the uh, good verses, the good verses. 
Um, he also uh, interviews our uh, our soul legends as well. He interviewed. Um, he's interviewed uh, Latasha from Escape. He done interviewed um, um, Shirley Jones from the Jones Girls. A lore. He's done a lot of interviews. You know what I'm saying? So definitely check him out. Uh, Sean from '90s Mood. Um, this boy, he's 25 years old, and the boy knows and lives 90s R&B. And y'all, he's so dope. He's funny. He's interviewed some people. Like, he's dope. So I'm going to put his stuff in the more info box. Shout out to another crew that I, I rock with in the Sykes Podcast. That's with Stephanie and Muse. Yo, they are funny. They are hilarious. But them two know they love them some music. And you're going to have a good time. You're going to laugh. Um, I'm going to put their info in the more info box. And uh, I want to shout out again um, the 90s R&B University. Shout out to Byron and and and, and, um, and, and Shan. Like, they're dope, man. They really educate you on albums of the 90s and things like that. I'm going to put their info in the more info box. And I just want to shout out R&B websites that's real. And they do this not for no clicks, and they don't do. They do it for the love of it. You know what I'm saying? You have people that used to do for the love of it, but now I don't know what's going on with them. And you can take that how you want. I'm just saying. I just feel like if we're gonna be an R&B community and we're gonna do this, we gotta be together. We can't be, you know, on some stealing stuff and, and claiming it's yours and doing all this because. R&B ain't never going to get pushed. So we got to all be together. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to everybody that has an R&B platform that does it the right way, the authentic way, and just love it. You know what I mean? But um, I want to get out of here. I kept y'all long enough. You know what I'm saying? Thank y'all. Thank y'all for rocking with me this year. I know I haven't been doing a lot of current R&B bangers, but back in 2022, we're going to be back at it. You know what I mean? But uh, thank y'all for supporting the R&B rest with me and Elise. You know what I'm saying? We just finished the Catch That with Zoe, and we talked about the OJ's um, So Full of Love album, because, again, we, we're celebrating the 50th year of Philly International Records, so we talked to him. That'll be in a more info box, y'all, but I want to wish y'all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and I said, why not go out on one of my favorite songs of the holidays, and um, this makes me think of my grandparents. I'm not going to cry, and, um, and, and I, I really love them. It's been going on uh two years that i've been without them but i know they uh my grandma's behind me but my grandma and grandfather is uh in in heaven looking over me and know that everything's gonna go right so uh i'm gonna end this episode with uh new year's resolution this is by otis redding and carla thomas and i will see y'all next year man <laughs> A new leaf yes, baby, let's make promises that we can keep and call it a new year's resolution. I'm out, y'all. Peace. See y'all in 2022.